sequences are when you're adding and subtracting the same thing. Um, geometric sequences are when you multiply by uh, each term to get the next term. Uh, now, sometimes the terms will be getting smaller. So it's like you're dividing. But just remember, the division is really truly multiplication by a fraction. Okay? So if you're going from 8, 4, 2, you probably think, well, we're dividing by 2 every time. Well, dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half. Okay? So keep that in the back of your mind. Um, we call this the common ratio which makes sense because a lot of times it is a fraction, so it ratio is like a fraction. Um, so your general form, there's, there's kind of a list of the terms in the sequence. I'll kind of try to explain this the same way. You start with your first term, you multiply the first term by the common ratio to get the second term. Well, then you're going to multiply by the common ratio again. And when you multiply this term right here by the common ratio, r times r is r squared. Okay, um, the recursive definition, just like the recursive definition for arithmetic, instead of adding the common difference, you're multiplying by the common ratio. Again, typically we start uh, with a sub 1 is given, so we start with a sub 2. Every once in a while you may run into a sub 0 is the first term that's given, so you may start with n is greater than or equal to 1. And your function formula, same thing here. So if your function formula, plug in the specifics. You're going to know the first term. You're going to know the common ratio. Um, now, usually there's there's not really any simplifying that we're going to do there. Um, so you don't really have to worry about that uh, as much. Okay, so let's look at an example. Let's find the common ratio, the recursive rule, the function rule, and the tenth term of the sequence. So if we are looking at 3, 6, 12, 24, 48, what are we multiplying by? Two. Okay, so our common ratio is positive two. Sometimes your common ratio can be negative, just like the common difference can be negative. The common ratio can be negative as well. So the recursive rule, again, is kind of, it's, eh, it's not as useful, but you still need to be familiar with it. The nth term can be found by taking the previous term, a sub n minus 1, times the common ratio of 2. And usually, actually, let me change the order of that. I apologize if you've already written it. But put the 2 in front. Okay. 2 times a sub n minus 1. Uh, that is when n is greater. That is a massive comma. That's when n is greater than or equal to 2. And our first term here was equal to 3. Our function rule or our explicit formula is a sub n is equal to the first term 3 times the common ratio 2 to the n minus 1. Now, I don't think that you'll have to simplify this, but let me show you what kind of simplifying can be done here. Okay? This is using some exponent rules. Okay? I am good with you leaving it right here. But if you're doing some problems and it may show up in a different form, here's what they have done. Using some exponent rules, um, I'm going to decompose that 2 to the n minus 1. And we can rewrite that as 2 to the n times 2 to the negative 1. Because remember your exponent rules, when you're multiplying things that have the same base, you add their exponents. So n plus negative 1 is going to give you n minus 1. So usually we're taking it from this form and putting it in the simplified form, but we're, we're working backwards here to simplify this. Now, uh, there's nothing that we can do with the 2 to the n. That's a variable. That's going to have to stay. But we can rewrite 2 to the negative 1. What do we do with negative exponents? Anybody remember? We put them, um, yeah, we move their position within a fraction. So 2 to the negative 1 was in the numerator. 
So we can make that a positive one exponent by moving it to the denominator. So two to the negative one is equivalent to one half. So you may see this function rule and then we can multiply the three times the one half. You may see this written as three over two times two to the nth. Okay, I know it doesn't look like it, but that is the same thing as the very first function rule that we were, that we wrote. Okay, those are equivalent. If you plug in one, you're gonna get the same answer for either one of them. If you plug in ten, you're gonna get the same answer for either one of them. Um, so actually, when I find the tenth term, I'm gonna do it with both just to show you that it does give you the same thing. Okay, so when I plug into the first one, a sub 10 is equal to 3 times 2 to the 10 minus 1. So that's equal to 3 times 2 to the 9th. Please, please, please do not say that that is equal to 6 to the 9th because it is not. Okay, you cannot multiply that 3 times the 2. Remember order of operations. Exponents come before multiplication. So you have to apply that uh, 9 exponent to the 2 and then multiply by 3. Okay, you can't multiply the bases and then apply the exponent. Okay, so 2 to the 9th. And if you just type that into your calculator, the calculator is going to interpret it correctly. Um, you can type it in 3 times 2 to the 9th and it'll be okay. It'll give you the same answer. Um, I'm just telling you, if you're doing any part of it by hand, that is not the same as 6 to the 9th. They're 6 to the 9th. Very, very, very big difference in those two answers. Okay. Um, if we plugged it into the bottom one, we would get the same answer. 3 over 2 times 2 to the 10th. 3 over 2 times 2 to the 10th gives us the same answer, 1,536. Okay. So they are the same rule. They're just written slightly differently. Let's do one more. Now this one looks a little weird. Okay, this one looks a little weird because it's not just numbers multiplied by each other. Um, it's it's got powers. It's kind of like we're looking at scientific notation here. We've got ten to the negative third, ten to the negative first, ten, ten cubed, and ten to the fifth. So does anybody see what we're multiplying by every time? What are we, what is 10 cubed? What is 10 cubed equal to? Right there, somebody just said. 10 cubed is 1,000. Okay, so how do we get from 10 to 1,000? What do we have to multiply by? 100, thank you. Okay, now, usually arithmetic sequences, it's much easier to figure out what you're adding and subtracting every time. Sometimes it's harder to determine the common ratio. So let me show you a foolproof <coughs> way to figure out what the common ratio is. Okay? You can pick any two terms in the sequence that you want to as long as they are consecutive terms. So I'm going to zoom in. For some reason my eye is drawn to 10 and 10 cubed. So to figure out the common ratio all you have to do is take the second term and divide it by the term that was immediately before it. Okay, I could do that with any of these terms. I could do it with 10 to the fifth and divide it by the very previous term, 10 cubed. I left off my five. Okay, every single time it's going to give me 100. Okay, as long as this is a true geometric sequence, it will give me 100 every time. So 100 is our common ratio. So if you're kind of struggling with figuring out what the common ratio is, that is a foolproof way to figure it out. Um, now I am going to write it just because of the way that this sequence is written. I am going to write it as 10 squared. We know that that's equal to 100. I'm fine with either answer. I'm just kind of following the pattern of what they gave me. Okay. Um, so our recursive formula <coughs> Excuse me. A sub n is equal to 10 squared times a sub n minus 1, um, where n 
is greater than or equal to 2, and a sub 1 is equal to 10 to the negative third. Our function rule is a sub n is equal to the first term, 10 to the negative third, times our common ratio, 10 squared, to the n minus 1. Now I am going to rewrite this one again just to show you how it happens. Okay, But first of all, I have a power raised to another power. Does anybody remember what happens when you raise a power to another? We multiply. So that's 10 to the 2n minus 2. Make sure that you distribute that 2 there. And then if we split that up, that's 10 to the 2n times 10 to the negative 2. So we have 10 to the negative 5th times 10 to the 2n. We're finding the 10th term. <clears throat> Honestly, it's a whole lot easier to plug it into that last one because we don't have as much stuff to type in. So I'm going to go with that one. Um, 10 to the negative 5th. Oh, and guess what? I don't even have to touch my calculator because, whoops, lots of times, 2 times 10 is 20. We have the same base. This time we have the same base, so we can combine those. So that's 10 to the 15th. And I would leave my answer that way uh, because that's a really, really, really big number. Okay. All right. So.